Hello and welcome to Enquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you, fellow choir people. In today's video, we're discussing senior choirs or elderly choirs. If you have clicked on this video, I suppose you're already working with them or you are just starting to work with them. I just wanted to make this video because I've been working with senior choirs for quite some time now and it's a completely different game. It's a completely different field. There are things you have to think about which you would never have to think about while working with other choirs. So I hope you find this video helpful. I'm not sure how much I can actually help you because senior choirs consist of different people and you can have a really productive senior choir which works really regularly and with a really huge repertoire and you can plan things and you can really work with them like you would work with a regular choir that doesn't have the senior in front of the name. But I will do my best to try to help you with these little notes I want wanted you to have. So let's start with the video. First of all, the term senior or elderly is connected obviously with their age. However, that age is really broad, you know, you can have a senior choir, but you can have a younger senior choir, an older senior choir. It is a very different thing if you're working with people who have just retired, in contrast with others are considered senior. And when you're working with people who are in their retirement homes, with their struggles as a very senior person who just wants to have some fun and wants to sing in a choir because that reminds him or her of the times when they were singing before. I'm currently working with two elderly choirs and they're very different. The first choir consists of people who are really senior, who are retired, who have their health struggles, but are also fully cognitively capable still. They are really eager to learn and the choir is based in their learning institution. It's an institution that is specifically made for retired people who want to take courses. Working with them is really specific because they can understand everything, but uh, the amount of work we do is obviously different. I also work in a retirement home with their citizens and that choir is you know, we meet once a week and we I play the piano, they sing the songs they want to sing. They will have performances, but they will be in the retirement home. So the way I have to think about the first choir and the second choir is very different. Elderly people are often compared to children, which I do and do not agree with. Elderly choirs are often compared to children choirs. Working with them is maybe in some cases similar, but they have different projections. Children are not fully formed opinions, while elderly people, senior people are developed fully. The knowledge they have is broad. They live the full life and probably they're older than you in most cases. So the way you approach that choir and that age is something you have to consider. That doesn't mean they have to be approached as old people because even though they're old, that doesn't mean they are done and you can really work with them. It just depends how much you're willing to work with them and the way you approach it. The physicality in this kind of a choir plays a role because older people tend to have health issues that affect their bodies. Maybe they are not able to stand, maybe they're not fully equipped to stand for a long time. That affects the way you're going to give the rehearsal, to plan the rehearsal, to plan the performances. It affects the length of rehearsals as well. The physicality also plays a part when it comes to their vocal apparatus because it's not the youngest of machines and the sound they can produce is obviously not as strong as they could produce before. So when you come to that choir and when you ask a person which voice 
did they sing before if they have sung before you have to know that their voice definitely changed in the meantime and it is not the same voice however it is a good reference point to have if they know what they sung before the sound they will produce will never be the sound you can get from a non-senior choir that is something you have to know you have to make your peace with you will never have a really strong harmonic sound if their voices cannot produce harmonics as well as some other voices when it comes to their sound i often see that it's you get what you get. They're fully formed people and they're fully formed voices. Their voices have been their voices for such a long time that you cannot do as much. You can work on the vocal technique, but the amount of time you can dedicate to it is much smaller than with the regular choir because their bodies can't take it. And when it comes to singing and when it comes to breathing, if you go with the regular path of the diaphragm and using your whole body to give the best breath to the sound, that takes a lot out of the body and elderly people maybe are not capable of using their breaths as much especially if they have some health issues when it comes to the sound i will strongly advise you to look at it this way don't try to make their sound something that it could never be it is what it is they're fully formed people and their voices are what they are and the way I try to work with them is to make the best out of the situation I have. One trick I have is to carefully position the singers in the choir. If you have watched some of the other videos here on the channel about how to get a better choir sound or how to position your choir members in a choir, you will know that I am a big proponent of carefully placing the singers in the choir because it makes a difference. So in this case, when it comes to their senior voices, I strongly advise you to work on this carefully because if you get to know their voices really well and their timbras really well, you probably have certain singers that are too loud and some singers that are really careful about the way they produce sound and you have people who are really prominent you have people who are really out of tune that all can make a better choir sound if you position them carefully so think about it that way i try to work with them as they are I think that my job is to give them the best opportunity to have the best choir sound I can make out of their voices. So I carefully position them. I carefully choose where every singer sits or stands and I try to develop a better choir sound. Because after all, sound is acoustics and acoustics is physics and i'm happy to say there will be a video about acoustics for choir directors soon but until then watch the other videos about that and i'm sure that it will make a difference connected to that is the projections you can have with this choir we all want a choir that keeps developing keeps hitting their marks getting you know better and bigger and fuller and more equipped to be honest, with a senior choir, the progress is not something you can plan and in most cases is not something you can have big. They can be fully equipped, but you never know what's going to happen, especially in a retirement home. Life is life and the circle of life is the circle of life. So the projection I can have with that choir is very different. I think it's important that you don't consider a senior choir to be useless. I'm very sensitive to that because I think it's really unfair. Older people have been in our lives and have given us so much. We are their future. And I think it's really important for us to give them, give them something back. If we approach a senior choir as, ah, let's just sing, who cares? That to me is really a wasted opportunity because you as a choir director can learn a lot and the choir can become better and can have performances. Those performances are something that is 
very valuable to them because as you probably know choir needs performances to to feel what they learned to express themselves in a in a different way to show themselves because if you just rehearse all of the time and you don't never get the experience of a performance that's a wasted opportunity they don't like that so i think it's really important that you make a plan but that plan consists of short-term goals you don't plan you know for the season finale nine months from now that you will have a two-hour concert because for a two-hour concert you need a lot of repertoire you need a well-practiced choir they have to have the stamina they have to have the energy you will not get with that with the senior choir but for example in a month they will learn two short songs and they can have a small performance during lunchtime in their retirement home two songs that's okay who knows what opportunity may come up when it comes to the performances i'm just saying that don't just do it without any sense or plan make a plan study them and project something that can be really beneficial for them just don't try to make them what they're not don't make them feel bad because they didn't get to a certain point when it comes to their sound as i mentioned their voices are not young their bodies are not young and that affects the sound the biggest advice i have for you is to sing everything in a lower key because the lower frequencies are easier for them and the lower frequencies have more volume and more eloquence so the amount of sound the amount of dynamics the amount of resonance they can produce is better in the lower frequencies that means that for a soprano senior soprano can also be a soprano but it's probably just shifted to the lower frequencies the specter has shrunk and shifted to a lower specter so have that in mind if you find something to be really difficult for them change the key you can do that put them in a lower key and if somebody objects because you're changing the key i mean come on ignore those people that takes me to the repertoire when it comes to the repertoire that i find that to be the trickiest part because to find something that sounds good in a senior voice is much more difficult especially when it comes to multi-voice part but i would advise you to go really simple a single melody line with piano accompaniment is great if you see that you can add other voice parts then do that but do that very carefully and i would say the arrangements for that are really depending on their voices be really careful about what arrangements you choose you have to be really careful you have to really know their voices you have to really know their ranges be careful about what voice parts you choose to add because it could be counterproductive when it comes to the literal repertoire, they will sing, ask them what they want to sing. They love to sing what they already know. In most cases, you as a choir director are again younger than them. So maybe they will ask for songs you don't know because they were before your time. Take it as an opportunity to learn something new. I find their songs from their time to be really beautiful because it was a different time. We forgot most of the songs and you have have to understand that the seniors also had a full life before coming to your choir so the repertoire is a broader thing and if a certain person is today 70 years old that means that in their youth they listened to very popular songs that was 50 years ago and 50 years ago it were the 1970s so 1970s were a very productive age i mean many cool things when it comes to music happened in the 70s so choosing something from that music era is a great thing and you can learn a lot and most probably you will figure out that most of the songs we listen to today are covers of the original songs that were from 60s and 70s take that as a learning opportunity and give in to them when it comes to the repertoire you want them to be happy and they will sing better if they know the song and they uh, they feel comfortable with the song so also study the library study the song books they maybe already have if you're succeeding a former choir director 
really 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 inform yourself on the repertoire they have already sung before because that could be a huge favor if you're already familiar with the previous repertoire especially because the previous choir director had to manage the repertoire and had probably studied the repertoire a lot and found many great songs. When it comes to the psychology of senior people, yes, they're not the easiest people, I will be honest, but I always view it like this. They have been around for a really long time and they deserve that I listen to them because actually I do think they know better than me because they have experienced more than me. However, of course, when it comes to the choir, in every case, the choir director is the only person who knows what the choir sounds like I as the choir director are the only one who can actually give the best advice. If you have ever worked with senior people in a choir you will know that you will sing a song and somebody will give their input. We should do this. We, When we were singing 20 years ago we would sing it like this. Well maybe it would sound better if we have done this. Those comments I get all the time throughout the rehearsal. I never instruct my choir to stop talking to me or to respect my opinion or I don't want to hear your advice because that is really mean and I don't think they deserve that. You know that I'm always for respecting the authority of the choir director, however in this case it's different. So I'm used to getting all of these comments and every time I get that comment I always say, for example, the last time on Thursday I got a comment we were singing a song, there were four verses, we were singing all of them and we finished the song and one singer said, you know when we sing the song we don't sing the third verse and I said, really why i wanted to listen what she had to say and she said well when we were singing it before it was too long we would sing the first the second and the fourth that's how we've always done it it's not a bad comment but it's something like do we really want to discuss that now i don't want to discuss that with her because she is right i mean she's just expressing her opinion so i always do this i always say really well that's cool. I mean, I agree with that. However, you know, while we are here and we are already singing that song, I would like that we sing all four verses just to get some more, you know, momentum and to warm up our voices better, if you agree. And when you approach it like that, in most cases, they will go like, oh, okay. And then they tend to forget about that and you get what you want. I'm not saying that you should do that all of the time because it's a really tricky thing to do. Because if you approach one comment like that, uh, if you let one comment like that, everybody can start commenting. But every comment I get, I always approach it like that. You know, you're completely right. I completely understand what you're saying. Would you mind to do it like this? just to try something out because I think it could maybe work like this and I want to have both options so that works I repeat they're fully formed people with their opinions and you cannot change their opinions by arguing with them it's just not the way it works they have been here long enough and they have been here longer than me I try to approach it like that to make sure that I hear them that I respect their opinion but I do have an opinion of my own and I'm a professional so I will try to connect both opinions while the senior choir can't give you maybe a world accolade for working with them, it can give you a lot of musical knowledge. For example, I mentioned the older songs, the older repertoire that they sung in their youth. That was a different time. And working with senior people can give you a real appreciation for the music you haven't been listening to. You learn about a different way how to approach a certain song because it is a different song. It's a closer history but I'm also learning so there are many benefits. The biggest benefit is to see them happy. You never know who is in your choir, you never know who is alone, who feels alone, especially with senior people. The companionship when you're older becomes more difficult in every sense. Some of them are losing their significant others and and then they come to that choir and try to feel better. So it's really important for me that the energy in the room and the energy in the choir is positive.
Okay, so that was it. I hope it was helpful. I would be interested to know if you agree with me and if you have had good experiences with working with elderly choirs. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you wish to talk to me, you can email me or put a comment down below. If you like the video, you can like it. If you wish to see more from Inquire to Choir, you can watch all of the other videos here and you can subscribe. Conduct well, conductors, and I'll see you next time. Bye!